All right, part two. <clears throat> the seven goslings, no, wait, the Zuckermans went up to change into their best clothes. Lurvy went to shave and put on his plaid shirt and his purple necktie. The animals were left to themselves in the barn. The seven goslings paraded round and round their mother. Oh, please, please, please take us to the fair, begged a gosling. Then all seven began teasing to go. Please, 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 please. They made quite a racket. Children, snapped the goose. We're staying quietly, idly, idly at home. Only Wilbur, Ilbur, Ilbur is going to the fair. Just then Charlotte interrupted. I shall go too, she said softly. I've decided to go with Wilbur. He may need me. We can't tell what may happen at the fairgrounds. Somebody's got to go along who knows how to write. And I think Templeton better come too. I might need somebody to run errands and do general work. I'm staying right here, grumbled the rat. I haven't the slightest interest in fairs. That's because you've never been to one, remarked the old sheep. A fair is a rat's paradise. Everybody spills food at the fair. A rat can creep out late at night and have a feast. In the horse barn you will find oats that the trotters and paces have spilled. In the trampled grass of the infield you will find old discarded lunch boxes containing the foul remains of peanut butter sandwiches and hard boiled eggs, cracker crumbs, bits of doughnuts and particles of cheese. In the hard packed dirt of the midway, after the glaring lights are out and the people have gone home to bed, you'll find a veritable treasure of popcorn fragments and frozen custard dribblings, candied apples abandoned by tired children, sugar fluff crystals, salted almonds, popsicles, partially gnawed ice cream cones and, and the wooden sticks of lollipops. Everywhere is loot for a rat, in tents, in booths, in haylofts. Why, a fair has enough disgusting leftover food to satisfy a whole army of rats. Templeton's eyes were blazing. Is this true? he asked. Is this appetising yarn of yours true? I like high living, and what you say tempts me. It is true, said the old sheep. Go to the fair, Templeton. You'll find that the conditions at a fair will surpass your wildest dreams. Buckets with sour mash sticking to them, tin cans containing particles of tuna fish and greasy paper bags stuffed with rot. That's enough, cried Templeton. Don't tell me any more. I'm going. Good, said Charlotte, winking at the old sheep. Now then, there's no time to be lost. Wilbur will soon be put into the crate. Templeton and I must get in the crate right now and hide ourselves. The rat didn't waste a minute. He scampered over to the crate, crawled between the slats and pulled straw up over him so he was hidden from sight. All right, said Charlotte, I'm next. She sailed in the air, let out a drag line and dropped gently to the ground. Then she climbed the side of the crate and hid herself inside a knot hole in the top board. The old sheep nodded. What a cargo, she said. That sign ought to say Zuckerman's famous pig and two stowaways. I like that word stowaway. A stowaway is if you smuggle yourself on some form of transport where you're supposed, you're not supposed to be, you haven't paid, you haven't bought a ticket. Um, so stowaways, typically they would be uh, stowaways on ships and they'd be hiding somewhere on a big ship. Um, Look out, the people are coming, coming, umming, shouted the gander. Cheese it, cheese it, cheese it. The big truck with Mr Arable at the wheel backed slowly down towards the barnyard. Lurvy and Mr Zuckerman walked alongside. Fern and Avery were standing in the body of the truck, hanging on to the sideboards. Listen to me, whispered the old sheep to Wilbur. When they open the crate and try to put you in, struggle. Don't go without a struggle. Pigs always resist when they're being loaded. Yeah, but if I struggle, I'll, I'll get dirty, said Wilbur. Yeah, never mind that. Just do as I say. Struggle. If you were to walk into the crate without resisting, Zuckerman might think you were bewitched. He'd be scared to go to the fair. Templeton poked his head up through the straw. Struggle he must said he, but kindly remember that I'm hiding down here in this crate and I don't want to be stepped on or kicked in the face or pummeled or crushed in any way or squashed or buffeted about or bruised or lacerated or scarred or biffed. 
Just watch what you're doing, Mr. Radiant, when they get shoving you in. Be quiet, Templeton, said the sheep. Pull in your head, they're coming. Look, Radiant, Wilbur, lay low, Charlotte. Talk it up, geese. The truck backed slowly to the pig pen and stopped. Mr. Arable cut the motor, got out, walked round to the rear and lowered the tailgate. The geese cheered. Mrs. Arable got out of the truck. Fern and Avery jumped to the ground. Mrs. Zuckerman came walking down from the house. Everybody lined up at the fence and stood for a moment admiring Wilbur and the beautiful green crate. Nobody realised that the crate already contained a rat and a spider. That's some pig, said Mrs. Arable. He's terrific, said Levy. He's very radiant, said Fern, remembering the day he was born. Well, said Mrs. Zuckerman, he's clean anyway. The buttermilk certainly helped. Mr. Arable studied Wilbur carefully. Yes, he's a wonderful pig. It's hard to believe that he was the runt of the litter. You'll get some extra good ham and bacon, Homer, when it comes time to kill that pig. Wilbur heard these words and his heart almost stopped. I think I'm going to faint, he whispered to the old sheep who was watching. Kneel down, whispered the old sheep. Let the blood rush to your head. Wilbur sank to his knees, all radiance gone, his eyes closed. Look, screamed Fern. He's fading away. Hey, watch me, yelled Avery, crawling on all fours into the crate. I'm a pig, I'm a pig. Avery's foot touched Templeton under the straw. What a mess, thought the rat. What fantastic creatures boys are. Why did I let myself in for this? The geese saw Avery in the crate and cheered. Avery, you get out of that crate this instant, commanded his mother. What do you think you are? I'm a pig, cried Avery, tossing handfuls of straw into the air. <coughs> the truck is rolling away, Papa, said Fern. The truck, with no one at the wheel, had started to roll downhill. Mr. Arable dashed to the driver's seat and pulled on the emergency brake. The truck stopped. The geese cheered. Charlotte crouched and made herself as small as possible in the knothole so Avery wouldn't see her. Come out at once, cried Mrs. Arable. Avery crawled out of the crate on hands and knees, making faces at Wilbur. Wilbur fainted away. The pig has passed out, said Mrs. Zuckerman. Throw water on him. Throw buttermilk, suggested Avery. The geese cheered. Lurvy ran for a pail of water. Fern climbed into the pen and knelt by Wilbur's side. His sunstroke, said Mrs. Zuckerman. The heat is too much for him. Maybe he's dead, said Avery. Come out of that pig pen immediately, cried Mrs. Arable. Avery obeyed his mother and climbed into the back of the truck so he could see better. Lurvy returned with cold water and dashed it on Wilbur. Throw some on me, cried Avery. I'm hot too. Oh, keep quiet, hollered Fern. Keep quiet. Her eyes were brimming with tears. Wilbur, feeling the cold water, cold water came too. He rose slowly to his feet while the geese cheered. He's up, said Mr. Arable. I guess there's nothing wrong with him. I'm hungry, said Avery. I want a candied apple. Wilbur's all right now, said Fern. We can start. I want to take a ride in the Ferris wheel. Mr. Zuckerman and Mr. Arable and Lurvy grabbed the pig and pushed him headfirst towards the crate. Wilbur began to struggle. The harder the men pushed, the harder he held back. Avery jumped down and joined the men. Wilbur kicked and thrashed and grunted. There's nothing wrong with this pig, said Mr. Zuckerman cheerfully, pressing his knee against Wilbur's behind. All together now, boys, shove! With a final heave, they jammed him into the crate. The geese cheered. Lurvy nailed some boards across the end so Wilbur couldn't back out. And then using all their strength, the men picked up the crate and heaved it aboard the truck. They didn't know that under the straw was a rat and inside a knot hole was a big grey spider. They saw only a pig. Everybody in, called Mr. Arable. He started the motor. The ladies climbed in beside him. Mr. Zuckerman and Lurvy and Fern and Avery rode in the back, hanging onto the sideboards. The truck began to move ahead. The geese cheered. The children answered their cheer and away went everybody to the fair. Okay, I'm going to stop there. See you tomorrow.